Rich Eisen, NFL Network host, and, of course, the Rich Eisen Show and Direct TV, following this show at the top of the hour. So, Rich, where is DeMarco Murray going to end up? I don't know. That's been one of the more fascinating aspects of this uh, this week where everything's leaked, everything's discussed, where we even reached a point where a city gets outraged about a guy making a commitment that he's not allowed to make in a window where it's called legal tampering and another team comes and takes him at the last minute and Frank Gore and people are up in arms about a guy who'd never even set foot in the city, not coming <laughs> to the city. And that's how crazy it's been over the last few days. And yet the leading rusher of the National Football League, a man who broke Emmett Smith's single season rushing record for the Dallas Cowboys, there's not a boo or a peep or a whisper or anything about any interest. Now you're hearing Jacksonville. I, I Who knows? I do, it has been truly bizarre about how DeMarco Murray has engendered not a single piece of information out in the NFL media market of uh, Twitter or anything blogging, Zippo, zero. I, I, I'm, I'm sort of uh, taken aback by it, and I think all those signs do point to him staying put eventually. I, I'm sure it's a bitter pill right now with whatever, whatever he's trying to figure out. Do I go to a team uh, that's rebuilding? that's offering me a ton of money, uh, uh, or do I stay put and and swallow a little bit of pride for a hometown discount and, and go out there? That is all pure speculation because I don't have any other knowledge uh, about what's going on there other than what I'm reading. And um, the, But the longer that I don't hear anything, the more I think that maybe Dallas does have a shot to, to land him again. Best move so far made by? Um, wow. I, I, you know, obviously you want to go with the splashiest maneuver and, and the Jets going ahead and taking Darrell Rivas off the Patriots roster and putting him on back on their team and, and having the Jet fans go and rally around a familiar figure. That That's the first one that leaps to mind. But the, the one... The moves that I like the best are, are are the team that re-signs their free agents because that's always the smartest move. Yep. Those are always the teams that draft well, which is the way to win in this league, and and keep their people. And the Packers did it again with Balaga and Randall Cobb. Every year, it's what it seems that's what Ted Thompson spends the big money on is keeping his people put. And 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 it's that's the way. I, if I'm an owner of a team, that's the way I want to build. That's the way I want to operate. And if you can make the move in free agency or a trade to go ahead and supplement all that, then go for it. But Randall Cobb and Balaga staying put for Aaron Rodgers is is a win uh, of of a large magnitude in my mind. Give me the one that. Give me the loser. You know what? I don't like using. You know, I don't like that. I see, okay, you know, head scratcher. You know, well, obviously, what Philadelphia's up to, I, I, you know, but I, I think that there's a there's a tree in this forest, Dan, and we, that we can't see it. And what it is 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 Chip Kelly likes Sam Bradford of all the people that he has chosen <laughs> over the past, you know, couple of years. This is the first time he has chosen somebody. The the players that he has had at that position, and certainly most positions, were Andy Reid's choices. And and now, um, you know, he has made a choice. I am going to take one guy in the National Football League or one guy in college and draft him into this position to run this offense that everybody raves about. And and the last person that you would think that Chip would want is a guy who hasn't finished the season healthy in, in three years and has 18 wins under his belt since being drafted number one overall who carries a cap charge higher than what LaShawn McCoy had. And and maybe when it all comes down to it, he likes Sam Bradford. And the, <laughs> he better he and, better uh, like him a lot because you're, you're you're not bringing him in at that figure to to compete with Sanchez and or somebody that he drafts who's definitely not going to be Mariota from the twentieth spot, and so uh, or anywhere near the twentieth spot. And 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 I you know I heard you driving in today talking about how the rumors that Washington's raising its hand <laughs> saying that we might be and of course they are anybody who's above the Jets is yeah. going to be raising their hand and saying we're, we're interested in Mariota too I mean his Mariota's pro day is tomorrow 
And and after his pro day at Oregon, guess who's working him out for a private workout, letting people know that he's doing that private workout that's publicly known? The Titans. Of course they're going to do that. Everybody's going to do that because they don't want everybody sitting there thinking that uh, that, that, that they'll pass on Mariota and, and, and let him slip to the Jets at six. You know, even the Bears are raising their hands at seven saying, well, we might be interested <laughs> in him too. Let's just so everybody's open for business right now. And and that's the way it always is in the NFL. Do you think that Mariota on his uh, pro day will practice huddling up and and making maybe taking some snaps under center? And call, and, oh, sure, and calling plays, making sure that everybody hears that he can call a play and know yeah. how to, knows how to do it. But but just huddling up, like you you huddle up and he calls a play and then they break and then they go back and they huddle up again. And Here's then they... the one thing I can guarantee you about Mariota's pro day is everyone will be raving about it at the end, and there will even be discussion in places that he could supplant Winston as the number one overall pick in Tampa. That it happens every year. Unless you're Teddy Bridgewater. It, it, well, that that was the one where it, it sort of did backfire for sure, yeah. But um, I think uh, Mariota is a different different um, player than Bridgewater. I mean, he's a Heisman Trophy winner, so uh, that's a different ball of wax. I mean, Bridgewater coming into the league, you could say, was a Thursday night football star. I mean, the number of times that I would look down at my Twitter feed during an NFL Network Thursday night football game and seeing an eye-popping highlight from him playing for Louisville was was frequent. Uh, Mariota's got a different a different style and obviously a different resume coming into the league than, than Bridgewater. He's Rich Eisen from the NFL Network. Rich Eisen show coming up top of the hour. Who's on the show today? Uh, Jim Mora, fresh off of his UCLA Pro Day. Um, we also have on the show Joe Beningo of the, of the fan. I mean, he is, you know, for people who may not know him, he's a diehard Jet fan, and he sounds like he's from Saddle River, <laughs> New Jersey, which he's from. And having Revis back in the fold, I, I, he's just He's he's good people. He's good good conversation. So he's going to be uh, calling in the show today, and we're just going to just talk as much as we can and try and make heads or tails of everything that happened yesterday, and and maintain you know as much of a focus on today as possible. But but that yet that yesterday was was as wild a day, especially since we came off of a weekend that was so active in a window that that was people weren't supposed to be so active. Yeah. And everybody thought that 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 all the surprises had been front loaded, and then Graham traded to Seattle, and Nada going from the Ravens to the Lions, and then uh, you know the the foals for Bradford swap uh, with the cherry on top being Darrell Revis going back to the Jets. Uh, that uh, that was quite something yesterday. I think the team that has done really well. I don't like to give grades and do winners and losers either. Yeah. But I think the Colts have quietly done a very very nice job, solid job. And I think the front office realizes you got Andrew Luck surround him. Let's take a shot. We're in a bad division. We should be able to get 10, 11, maybe 12 wins. Let's bring in a running back. Maybe we bring in Andre Johnson. We lose Reggie Wayne. We've got a young team here. Let's roll the dice. You know, maybe New England's wounded a little bit here, losing Revis and Browner. Let's take our shot here, and I I think that uh, they they're they're quietly you know sneaking up on some people here. Yeah, and they're not done. I mean, Andre Johnson could be next, and um, which would mean Andre Johnson's got a great shot to win his first career game in Indianapolis. Um, <laughs> so you could also take a look at the rest of the landscape there. You're right. I, I will not believe New England is wounded until I see it on the field. Um, that Belichick always he can he can he can recreate his roster week to week. Yep. So why shouldn't he be able to do it season to season? You know, certainly as we've got Brady there and 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 him and the rest of the decision makers still in place there. But if I but, said who's more likely to get back to the Super Bowl, Seattle or New England, you'd say Seattle, right? Well, I don't know. I mean, just because why? Revis is no. Gone I mean, right Brown, now Brown is gone, and I mean, well, those are big losses. I, I know those are big losses, but. But New England is still New England, and Brady is still Brady. But Seattle didn't lose anybody, oh, and they gained but, Jimmy Graham. Well, I knew Grant and Max Unger, but they got Jimmy Graham in there. Right, they did. They did lose Maxwell and replaced him with Kerry Williams. That 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 is definitely, uh, I think, in the eyes of many, a downgrade. Beast in, mode in a is back. Position. Yeah, that is true. Listen, I I love Seattle. I I, I chose them to win the Super Bowl last year and and uh, preseason and uh, and. As we all know, uh, it it looked pretty darn good with 40 seconds to go, and 
long story short is that I think that I'm not ready to say that the the Patriots are going to be supplanted in the AFC, but Luck made the playoffs his first year and has advanced deeper into the playoffs every year since, which would mean uh, a, a Super Bowl visit for Indianapolis this year, which definitely would not surprise me. Yeah. But um, I and I do like the Frank Gore maneuver. I like I like I do like everything that they've been doing uh, so far, and you know I'm still waiting to see what other pieces might be added in other places before you start um, throwing stones. But the, the head-scratcher, obviously, is Philadelphia and San Francisco. You know, uh, do you call it a rebuild? Is that what is <laughs> happening there? Um, that, that is, but, but, you know, the draft is a very large piece as to what, what you do in, the, in, the, uh, in this time of year. For a perfect example is what would the Giants offseason been graded a year later if they didn't draft Beckham? Yeah. I mean, that was a crucial piece. You just don't know who players are until you get them on the field in training camp and on the field in the regular season, and you don't know who's going to be there until the draft. And that's why that is a huge, huge piece of any puzzle before you start grading everybody as a whole. He's Rich Eisen. You can see the whole show coming up top of the hour on DirecTV's audience channel. That was channel. a great, great way to play off what I said into promoting what I'm doing and then, you know, using your voice to show me the door on this show, Dan. I, I sense that we're wrapping up. You're a true professional. What you just did there is why is why you, you lift all them scripts, Dan. <laughs> you're prepared. <laughs> You're, you're as good as they get. Thank you, Rich. I really enjoy that. And by the way, also I heard driving in, you talked about draft day and how you love draft day. Yeah. Because who was in it? Jen Garner was in it. Roseanne Arquette was in it. Chris Dan, Berman. I had, two, I had two crucial cameos in it. Um, I, 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 I acted, that's the only way to put it, with Frank Langella in a scene. He's an Oscar-nominated, Tony Award winner. Um, and I, I think I held my own in that scene, Dan, and, and, and um, I'd, I'd appreciate it if you I, just gave me a pop. I would love to talk to you, but Jordy Nelson is calling in. <laughs> I would love to talk about that movie role. All right, DP. Thank Very you, good. Rich. All right, bye. Yes.